One of our next guests says the more overall conditions ease, the more the Fed may have to raise rates again in 2024. Joining us now, Diane Swank, KMPG chief economist, along with Steve Leisman. Folks, welcome. Diane, I I'm curious, why does the easing of financial conditions, if that's what we're witnessing here, mean that it's more likely that the Fed will raise rates in 2024? The, the markets seem to not be saying that. Well, I think there's a key issue here, and that is that the Fed included financial conditions in their assessment of why they could pause. And I don't think they want to raise rates again in December. I do think they want to have this be the end in rate hikes. But they were looking to financial market conditions actually doing some of that heavy lifting for them. Now, we may get lucky, and the economy may continue to normalize, as Barkin said. That said, I look at this jobs report and I say, well, we've got 96,000 people in this report that were affected by strikes. That's beginning to already unwind with some of the tentative deals that we have on the table. And I think that's important to remember because you had 96,000 back onto that 150,000 and all of a sudden you're well over 200,000 again. And I think that's very important to remember. We also know the strikes took a toll on hours work and on wages during the month. So some of the normalization is a bit of a head fit and transitory, dare I say it, due to strikes, and we could see wages pick up again by the end of the year. So mm. this is something the Fed has to watch very carefully. They included financial conditions in their statement. The question is whether they will be able to sort of rely on that, or is that going to be something they regret in 2024? So, Steve, if I'm understanding Diane correctly, you know, the 10-year bond has dropped about a half percent in the last 10 days, from a little over 5 to 4.54 as we begin this hour. So that's an easing of financial conditions. Diane says the Fed was probably looking for the markets to do some of its work for it. It was doing that maybe at 5 percent, but it's doing less of that at 4.5. You know, Tyler, I, I don't feel on a Friday like looking for something new to worry about. Okay. I, I was worried about <laughs> rates being too high. They've eased off. I'm not going to worry about rates being too low, not especially if I take a chart of the 10 year, which is me speaking to the control room as I look yes. at you right now. Yes. And I look at a chart, chart of the 10 year from there May. From May. What I see is I look at that, or sorry, April low. Of 326 basis points, 3.26, there you go. And I see that financial conditions are quite a bit still restrictive from where they were. And so the fact that they're not five and they're four and a half or 454 is not going to give me trouble to think that the market, that, the, that, that, that financial conditions are easing to the point that the Fed would be back in play. And I will say this because I always disagree with Diane advisedly. I'll say the market is with me on this. Maybe they're over their skis. But if you look at the probabilities this morning, the rate cut is out of the pricing entirely, almost. The rate cut. Ra sorry, rate hikes rate are hike. almost entirely out. And rate hikes are in. I'll walk you through two charts here. No, One, no, no, no. Rate cuts are in. Rate hikes are out, out. and cuts are in. Cuts are in. Thank okay. you. Did I mess that up? I'm yes. so sorry. But yes, take a look here at the probability. For the first five, time in your life. 5% coming for December right now. And then I can't read this. There, where is it? There it is. 11% for January, 10% for March. More interesting is what's happened now to just, that's the, those, are the, those are the hikes. And now look at the cuts is the next chart. What you'll see is something like a 55% probability of a cut now in May. That wasn't even in play before. Now it's in play. So I think the market is like, well, what's going on? What's going on is the reason why this is down, why yields are down, is because three things that caused them to be higher have now resolved themselves. The Fed less hawkish. It was the Fed's hawkishness in the September meeting that caused yields to rise. The Treasury issuance was a big problem in August. They took some of that away. And the third thing is the, um, uh, the issuance and, and, and then just the growth story easing back.